it came really from, you know, the obviously the short film that I made was sort of one scene in this world. And um, it was a scene that I wrote sort of over and over again that encapsulated this moment in my life of feeling like um, I had really lost my way. And, and the bigger theme for me of like adulthood and kind of figuring out how to pay your rent and be a grown up but still stay true to who you are and how quickly all of that fades away after college and sort of you know, finding yourself lost in the world of work and all of these things. That's I worked good. in reality TV. I also worked in fashion. I've worked in advertising. Like I've had quite a few day jobs on my, while I'm pursuing being a filmmaker. And so I think that, um, you know, as can happen to a lot of us, our day jobs become our jobs and the, our jobs become our lives and years pass and you realize like, I didn't do anything I planned to do or I still have this passion to tell these stories. And for me, you know, when I made the short, I had always thought it would make a great series because there's a show within a show. That was kind of the idea. But um, the, the short was really one scene. And that was like, it was it was interesting jumping off place for us in terms of creating a series, but we really had to create a series. So, um, you know, and I was really, really proud of the short. I felt like it did what I wanted it to do. It conveyed the feeling in the moment that I wanted it to convey, but there was so much left to do. Nina, um, who runs Lifetime, asked me to come in and see the short, um, which I did, and I loved uh, how kind of raw and grounded it felt, and um, I loved that it was sort of despicable, that the behavior of the producer was um, kind of indefensible, and yet I had a lot of empathy for that character. Um, and so the, the tone of it was really intriguing to me. So I said, all right, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in, and I met with Sarah to make sure we, we thought alike, and we did. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, like I, I've, I've said before, I think that um, the whole genre of reality TV, it's, it's almost um, it, surprising to me that this hasn't happened sooner, that someone hasn't taken a, a fictional show and sort of dissected how they actually work and what the impact is on the people who make them as well as the people who are in them. And um, we really wanted to take a, a really hard look at that and also at some of the things that, you know, people watching them take away from, from those shows that, that are in many cases just um, falsehoods. <laughs> There's so many things, but um, I mean, you know, primarily one of the things we talked about is that, um, you know, in these competition dating shows, they have this very old-fashioned idea of, particularly, you know, like Everlasting, you know, a bunch of women competing for the prince, and the idea that that women are sort of disposable. Oh, that one didn't work, so we just throw her away. And we have this one, we have to throw her away, and it's fi perfectly fine for the gentleman in this scenario to be dating all of them and every one of those women he's the sole focus of their attention and in a weird way their um, whole self-worth gets wrapped up in what he thinks of them but in 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 a much bigger picture their whole self-worth gets wrapped up in what america thinks of them which is this strange thing that i think is going on in the culture where um, the private and the public are all getting mixed up and you know being famous for 15 minutes isn't Mm -hmm. You know, it's longer than 15 for a lot. It's like every day, you know. So I think that um, wanting to sort of pick apart at that and um, take a harder look at, at what reality and in some cases bullying television does to people. So that was thematically for us a big one. Yeah, and the princess fantasy was something I think that Marty and I talked about from day one, which is sort of, you know, the fairy tale that little girls were fed since they're three and the feeling that one person could solve all of your problems and that you really just need to wait for that person to show up feels so antiquated, but it's kind of in our DNA as Americans or whatever it is, you know, and, um, and, that, and that, that TV, even though it's, you know, frivolous and funny and people enjoy watching it, it does inflict real damage. Like it, it really does when you start analyzing women on that really brutal scale of sort of one to 10, hot or not, <laughs> um, you know, like, you know, is she a wifey or is she a slut? And all these like really horribly dissecting things that, that dehumanize women. A lot of it for us is just making them three-dimensional humans, you know, like putting the dimension back in these people that have become magazine cutouts. I always tell people it's kind of a dark, 
comedy. It has humor. Um, it's definitely a workplace drama, but but you know more. You know the show that I always or the references I always think of, although it, they sound a little highfalutin or like um, like Altman or you know mm -hmm. um, one of those kind of behind the scenes where the characters are really natural and and real, and you feel like you're you're getting a peek behind a a privileged curtain. Yeah, and I think, you know, for us, too, the other thing is um, it gets talked about sometimes as an expose, and even though that's interesting, it's not quite it's not quite right in terms of it's not all we're doing because just ripping the curtain back on reality TV by itself would last, like, half an hour. It's an interesting special. This is really about characters. It's really about people, and, and they happen to work on reality television. Yeah, and I think also because, you know, I had, I had worked in reality TV... I've worked on other sets. Marty's worked all over the industry. And for a lot of us, just set life is a, it's not super specific to reality, but it is a thing. And there's a traveling family when you're working on a set and nobody's going home. That's probably all of you guys know. <laughs> um, um, and so, yeah, there's a lot there's a lot of reference to that and a lot of, you know, specifics. But also, again, we created a drama. We started with a whiteboard and dry erase markers. This is not, you know, in any way like specific to events or, or details, but I do feel like it's very grounded because we've all worked in the industry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the one thing I would say that that is unique about it is that there's still a perception, I think, that reality, everybody knows that it's a little bit manufactured, but um, I think that it's become such a bizarre system now where you take non-actors, in some cases, very naive people, you know, there's a, we repeat a line a lot in the show, which is they know what they signed up for, they don't know what they signed up for. Um, there's no way you could know, if, especially if you're not, you know, from Los Angeles. You know, you yeah. see films, you know, things happening all the time. They don't know, and um, and there's no way they can prepare for that. And I think that um, the toll it takes on the producers who are not allowed to just go up to them and say, okay, this is the part you're playing. This is what we need you to do. They have to actually trick people into acting the way they want them to act. It's it's such a bizarre mm -hmm. kind of um, theater that's come up around this stuff. And I think that um, uh, that's why the reality part is so important, because they're all engaged in this um, kind of, you know, they're kind of all in on it, and they're kind of not. And I think the 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 thing that really hasn't been explored in television yet is is what that does to people. When you dehumanize people to that level that they become your meat puppets, <laughs> exactly. it's hard to feel very human yourself. I mean, when you have no value for somebody's family or their backstory or any kind of sensitivity to who they are, and they literally just become dolls that you're moving around, inevitably, I think you start feeling less human yourself. Oh, I mean, I think I'm, I'm just speaking as, as a female writer or producer who, you know, in the last mm -hmm. two years, I mean, likely will have three shows on now. Um, and those were all shows that I couldn't sell five, six years ago. Um, the, the difference between um, television now and what it was before, say, Mad Men um, broke through that basic cable um, barrier. I mean, the HBO and Showtimes were kind of the only game in town if you wanted to do something that was a little more challenging or had a female protagonist who wasn't, you know, just a lawyer or a cop or a doctor. And then now, all of a sudden, it's just the, uh, the opportunity to write these fully formed uh, m meaning, you know, complex, not all good, not all bad. Um, that's what I've always wanted to do. And then, you know, all of a sudden, um, over the last three or four years, the uh, appetite for that, guess what? People want to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and like for me, when I was pitching this show, um, what I had heard was uh, people had pitched it quite a lot. Like the, the idea, a, version of, this, a yeah. version of it. Yeah. Like going behind the scenes on a reality mm -hmm. show had been in the water for a long, long time. And a lot of people had tried to crack it. And the thing, I guess, that sort of made the difference with this show is there's a way in. There's a character. It, we're following somebody through her life and through this world. And so there's a really, really strong point of view. And I think that that's, you know, for us in the writing of it, something that we came back to a lot, that this isn't just a general survey or a, hey, like, like fun look behind the scenes. This is somebody's journey, you know, a real person and a real character. And so that, I think, and even for me, like, in terms of sort of cracking it myself, 
10 years ago, I think, you know, um, I wouldn't have been able to write it at all. But um, but having the perspective on it that we did by the time we came in, which was the thing about having compassion for both sides of the camera, having a more sort of inclusive view of all of the characters um, made a big difference. And then finding a home for it, too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And having, having, a, having a network like Lifetime have an appetite for something like that, I think, is very much an indication of sort of this, like, third wave of golden age of television we're in. 